E-I-E-I-O. And on that farm he had some chicks. E-I-E-I-O. Hi, boys and girls. Welcome to my farm. I wanted you to meet my chickens, and I thought we'd have a fun read aloud today. This is coffee, and this is toffee. We're going to read three hens and a peacock, but my chickens are going to try to escape. So we're going to have to watch them. Here, girls. Come on. They want to be free. All right, there's one. Oh, gosh. Now more are coming. All right, here we go. Three Hens and a Peacock by Lester L. Laminac. Things were quiet on the Tucker's farm. The cows chewed the cud. The hens clucked and pecked and laid their eggs. The old hound stretched out on the porch, watching and listening. Once in a while, someone would stop and buy tomatoes or corn, perhaps a quart of milk. Nothing unusual happened there until that peacock showed up and the cows and the hens and the old town kept right on doing what they'd always done. But the peacock had never lived on a farm. He had no idea what to do. So he spread his fancy feathers and set to shrieking. Hey, no noisy chickens during my read aloud. Eventually, the peacock wandered down the road. When cars whizzed by, he shook his feathers and cried out in his loudest voice. Of course, folks stopped for a closer look. Day after day, more folks stopped to admire the peacock and they all bought tomatoes, corn, eggs, and milk. Business on the Tucker's farm was booming. Everyone seemed happy to have visitors stopping by. But trouble was brewing in the hen house. These hens were squawking and clucking and flapping their wings. We do all the work around here. I'd like to see that peacock lay one single egg. Exactly, he just struts around screaming. I suppose fancy feathers are more important than laying eggs. That lazy peacock gets all the attention and we do all the work. The peacock had hurt every word. For days he moped about moaning and groaning. I wish I could be more useful around here. Ha! Huh, clucked one hen. The others fluffed their feathers. The old hound stretched and slowly raised his head. Why not let the peacock stay here and be useful for a while and you hens take that glamorous job down by the road? The three hens began clucking to one another. What a wonderful plan. Yes, it's a fabulous idea. Oh, ladies, we simply must fancy up our feathers tonight in nothing but our brightest beads, bangles, and bows. We'll stop traffic for sure. Why, you girls know I can strut with the best of them. The peacock perked up. Let's do it, he declared. Tomorrow, I'll stay here, sit on the nest, and cluck. And we'll get all gussied up, said the heads, and we'll be so glamorous. At sunrise the next morning, the heads strutted down to the road. The peacocks marched right to the hen house and poked his head inside. The hens flocked the road, waiting for a car. When they saw one approaching, they clucked and squawked and flapped their wings in a flurry of feathers. But every car just whizzed on right by. 
The peacock sucked in his tummy and wiggled from left to right, trying to squeeze through the tiny hen house door. His front half was in, but his back half was out. Down by the road, those hens tried every chicken trick they knew. Still, no car stopped. Finally, the peacock made it into the hen house. He held his breath, pushed with all his might, but no matter how hard he tried, he could not lay not even one single egg. Not even one. The old town stretched out on the porch, watching and listening. What's the peacock doing in the hen house? Asked Farmer Tucker. Who knows, said Miss Tucker. And what are those hens doing by the road? Not one of them is up here laying eggs. Well, the way things are going, we aren't likely to have anyone buying eggs today, said Farmer Tucker. We need that peacock down there stopping those cars. When the peacock heard that, he smiled the biggest smile you ever saw on a bird's beak. I'm helping, he thought. He squirmed back and forth until he popped out of the cramped hen house. Then he trotted off to find those hens. Hi, girls. Chicken life ain't easy. The exhausted hens were all clucked out. Every feather was out of place. What a day. We couldn't get one car to stop. It's true why most of them didn't even slow down. The peacock met the hens as they trudged up the road. I can tell you, I'm no good at laying eggs, he said. I'm just not meant for it. One hen nodded. I put on my stellar strut and I, I couldn't even get a car to stop, she said. I have to hand it to you, Fancy Feathers. Your job is harder than we thought. The other hens agreed. The peacock looked relieved. So the hens marched back to the hen house. The peacock strutted down the road. The old town stretched out on the porch watching and listening. And things were quiet again on the Tucker's farm. Let's have a look at one of my ladies. Girls! Oh, here's my big girl. This is Polly. She's a big girl. I hope you enjoyed listening to the story. This was my noisy red chicken. I have lots of fun things pl planned this week for us. So please tune in. I need some feedback. Let me know what you hear. Our next story is going to be a little bit on the spooky side. I miss and love you all and look forward to hearing from you. Ah! Uh -huh.